Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from Stacy, who's KI5MIT. Now, she has an interesting question, and I think uh, it's something that would be a very practical question for uh, somebody who's fairly new to ham radio, and here's what it is. The quick version. Will a DX commander antenna work as well if the mast was metal? The short answer to that is no, absolutely not. Now, I recognize that this is really a question for Callum, who's the uh, inventor, father, tender, uh, executor, whatever for the DX commander antenna, but I can answer for him. The answer is no. It's plastic, and the reason it's plastic is because what the uh, DX Commander antenna is, and I'll just draw a picture of it right here. You've got uh, some ground radials down here, okay. And then you have a fan vertical. You have a wire for 40, a wire that's half as high for 20. You've got one in the middle here for 30. And these are all connected down at the bottom. Okay, and then 10 and 15 and all of those other things like that. This is the equivalent of a fan dipole. A fan dipole might have a 40 meter element, so that's uh, 66 feet long. And then connected here, half wave. And you can do this, by the way, at home. Very easy to do. A 20 meter antenna. Now, the tuning and they're all fed by the same feed point. There's no fancy balance or anything down here. Okay, now the thing that you can do with this would be a fan dipole, and so named because the uh, pieces here, they're the elements are fanned out. So if you had a, a 15 meter, it'd be down here, and a 10 meter, and you, you, you kind of fan them out a little bit, now, uh, one of the antennas I looked at as a possibility for the reference antenna was the um, Alpha Delta DXEE antenna, which has got along the top a 2040 trap dipole, and then underneath held down about that much by plastic separators was your 15 meter antenna, and below that your 10 meter antenna. Okay, it works. These work. These fan dipoles work and they can be multi-band antennas and there are no compromises in there in terms of bandwidth or anything like that. It just takes a little extra wire. Now, tune them carefully. I guess there's a school of thought that you tune from the longest to the shortest. I think I would tune from the shortest to the longest, but um, you're going to have to adjust each separately and you're going to find that tuning one of these might affect the tuning of another. Okay, by the way, you don't need to put a 15 meter in here because the 40 meter will do for 15. Now, what would happen, and I, I'll, I'll take a simple case. You've got a house and there's a rain gutter, okay, and it's got a downspout here. What would happen if you placed an antenna right directly next to the gutter? The answer is it would not work very well, if at all. You'd have a horrible time tuning it, um, and it would not act as a good antenna. Now, you can get a few feet away from it and start doing some creative things, but the thing is, the center here that holds this all up is a plastic mast. It may be fiberglass. I haven't looked at it recently. Fiberglass, whatever, non-conductive material. Now, what Stacy has done says, I have a DX Commander style quarterway vertical with radials, but instead of a mast, I hang the elements from a tree using a four-foot uh, PVC coupler, okay, PVC, non-conductive. It works great. 
I have 160 meters, 80 meters, 40, 20, 17, and 15. The ones longer than 30 basically get turned into an inverted L across the yard in different directions. I've made great contacts on every element. I would like to make this permanent using the DX Engineering vertical radial plates and a metal mast for supporting the elements. Would this diminish the effectiveness? I think diminish is an understatement. I think it would kill its effectiveness. You have a very successful antenna system. She says like her 40 meter, instead of going all the way up, and she doesn't have a, a mast in there. They're just held from the tree. The 40 goes up. She has another going up for 80, another for 160, and so on, all coming from a common point on the ground with a common set of radials. Okay. Um, and she goes on to say that it's a, a, a wonderful antenna for her. Okay. And she wants to use the vertical radial plate. You can get radial plates from DX Engineering. They're about $75. They're made of stainless steel. And they will connect to the ground part of the antenna or the shield part of the coax. And then all the radials can be connected to it with stainless steel bolts. I have one of them. Uh, and it works just fine. Um, the metal mass for supporting the elements is where you have the problem. The problem is because this piece of metal mast is an antenna in and of itself. It's also going to really throw off the tuning of everything else. I would recommend strongly that you not do that. You'll be very disappointed with the results. It sounds like what you have is a very successful antenna, and it would certainly work. But if you want to use a mast rather than the tree, because I would imagine the tree moves around a little bit, in the wind. Um, you know, you could use a spring or put a rope on a weight or something like that. Uh, and then uh, you'll be in, in good shape. Now she mentioned she has a YouTube antenna, so I'm going to give it a shout out. You'll have to stop the screen on that to figure that out. Okay. Um, there are ways, Stacy, to make your YouTube channel uh, URL. So it says youtube.com slash user slash uh, your uh, name, the name of uh, that you're using as your Gmail account to base the thing on. Like, for example, mine is youtube.com. And you really don't even need the user, Dave. Kassler, all one word. This will take you to my YouTube channel. And it's a lot easier to tell that to somebody than having to put that great big long identifier there. But I hope some people will take a look at your YouTube channel. Um, so I think that answers the question. I think what you have is almost an ideal setup. And I wouldn't mess with it if you're concerned about the trees in a hurricane, there are things you can do with like bungee cords or something like that at the top to give it a little movement in there. Note that the bungee cord effect, which is a spring effect, is very different from coming up to a pulley over to a pulley and then to a rock, which is a mass effect. Mass and spring tension are two different things, but I'll let you figure all that out. Okay. So there you have it. Um, probably a lot more discussion than you wanted to hear, but I hope it's helpful. Until we next meet, 73.